Welcome to Real Girl Talk Podcast Radio. Welcome back to Real Girl Talk Podcast Radio. I am your host, Sherry Ricard. I am a medical professional, author, adversity recovery specialist, and co-founder of Silver Lining Wellness Company. I love sharing my faith and bringing you fascinating guests, Friday fire messages, thinking outside the box, sharing ideas for business, beauty, and lifestyle abundance, and always committed to keeping it real. Now let's level up and let's dive in. Welcome back to the show, all of you beautiful people. Thank you for joining me today. I have a Friday fire message for you, and we're going to return in about two weeks, adding some really exciting guests. But these Friday fires, I'm getting so much feedback from you guys. Thank you that you're really enjoying them and you're learning a lot. And that just fills me up, fills me up. So I want to keep going with some of these Friday fires, knowing that it's helping you and I'm getting a lot of positive feedback from them. And look, I'm just going to tell you straight up. I I get fired up when I'm doing my Friday fires because even just researching them and studying some of the scripture and listening to the word, I can gather up a podcast message that hopefully fills you up right when you need it. I don't think anything is by accident. So it's not an accident that you're listening to the podcast today. It may be something that you need right now in your life or that you can learn from that you may apply to your life even two days from now or two weeks or two months, two years from now, and you'll think back about this podcast and listen to some of these scriptures. So today, my Friday fire is the importance of guarding your mind and controlling your thought life. Your mind plays a tremendous important role in your life. We all know that. When you made Jesus your Lord in your life, the Holy Spirit infused the love of God into your spiritual self, and you were then changed. But the Bible says we became new creatures in Jesus Christ. But it is also important for us to understand that although God totally makes our inside completely brand new, he doesn't do anything to our physical bodies or to our minds. He leaves both of those areas up to us to take care of. And I'm going to tell you, Satan's favorite area to work in your life is in your mind. You may wake up in the morning and have this horrible thought because he is going to attack you right when your eyeballs open. So you have to say your prayers right then before your feet hit the floor that he is not going to deceive you in your mind. He cannot touch your spiritual man once you're born again. So the Bible says you are in the palm of God's hand and no man can snatch you away, but he can deceive you in the mental area if you allow him to. Jesus called Satan in John 8, 4, 4, the father of lies and all that is false. Wow. And I can't think of an area that keeps more people in bondage than in this area of our thought life. Satan specializes in worry, fear, anxiety, confusion, and doubt. He is the master deceiver, and he knows that he can control and manipulate our whole lives by simply affecting the way we think. Your mind is the bullseye of Satan's target. And if you know that, then you'll pay attention to the thoughts that are flowing through your mind every second of every day. And you can stop that process. You can stop him before he takes that thought and takes it down a path of no return. The only entrance Satan has into your personality, your emotions, and into your thoughts is through your mind. But fortunately, my friend, you can control the doorway. The only access the enemy has to your life is the access that you allow him to have. That's why the Bible says in Ephesians 4, 27, give no place to the devil. We've got to be very selective and very cautious about what you choose to think about. You've got to take control of your life by standing guard over your thought life. The Bible says in Proverbs 3, 27, I love this verse. I say this all of the time. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So what are you thinking? What are you thinking? Because as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. You will eventually become, if you allow yourself to think negative worry and fearful thoughts, then you will become a negative, worried, fearful person. Say that really fast five times. 
You cannot think defeat and expect victory. You can't think poverty and then expect wealth. It's just not possible. You can't think the worst and then expect the best for your life. It just doesn't work that way. You've got to think about what you're thinking about. Write that on your mirror. Put that on your vision board. You've got to think about what you're thinking about. Take regular inventory of your thought life. You've got to be extremely careful and extremely aware about what you allow in your mind and what you allow your mind to think about and what you choose to dwell on. You can get a thought, but you can get rid of it really quickly. But if you have that negative thought about something, a situation or someone, and you choose to dwell on it, then there it will stay. Because what we think about is what comes about. Satan would love to keep you living in a life of pure defeat by causing you to think thoughts of worry and anxiety and fear. If you haven't listened to episode 154, Why You Should Become Deaf to Defeat, Go back and tune in after this show and listen to my episode 154, Why You Should Become Deaf to Defeat. He knows that he can keep our minds all cluttered and confused all of the time because things of confusion are of Satan, not of God. So if he can keep our minds all cluttered and confused, you will never be the person God wants you to be. God gives us a tremendous promise, and he does that in Isaiah 26, 3. And it's very simple, yet it's really, really profound. It's very powerful. God said, I will keep you in perfect peace if you keep your mind stayed on me. Hmm. If that doesn't tell you about the mind and how your your peace and your positivity, also your negativity can come about through your thought process, I don't know what to tell you. It's right there. It's biblical. It says that in Isaiah 23, 26, 3. God said he will keep you in that per- perfect peace if you keep your mind on him. Notice that there is something that we all have to do if we're going to experience perfect peace. You've got to have that control over your thought life. You've got to have control over what you're thinking about because what you think about comes about. We've got to guard our minds. We've got to think on things of God, but it's not going to happen just automatically. We have to take control. This has got to be a decision you continually make throughout your entire life. This isn't just going to be something you do for a day or two. This is something you have to embed in your life. And believe me, I've had to do it over the years because I have negative thoughts that come up all of the time in the why me's and and all of this since my son passed away in 2007. I'll have negative thoughts that come into mind. I've even looked at moms that have these grown, beautiful sons, multiple sons, and I'm thinking, why is it okay for her to have all that? But that was taken away from me. Why does my son, Carson, not to get to have his big brother? Why does my daughter not to get to have her other brother? Why is that? There it'll stay dwelling in my mind, and then I'll start getting angry and I'll get frustrated and I'll get resentful because what we think about comes about. And then I'll start going down that path and start dwelling on that. And and I'll remember, okay, I've got to reel it back. I have to reel it back. So this is something that you have to do on a daily. See, we live in a very negative society, especially in this day and age. This culture focuses on what's wrong and not what's right, what's missing and what we, what we don't have, what's ugly, not what's beautiful. We pick up the newspaper today or all we have to do is watch an episode or watch the news. We could watch it tonight and see the major focus is always on the negative. Has to do something about taking control of our mind. Every one of us are going to have plenty of opportunities to dwell on wrong things. I'm not saying you have to walk around all day with your head buried in the sand or up in the clouds, but the enemy is constantly bombarding our thoughts in our minds with negative thoughts that are trying to confuse us and distract our attention away from the things of God. He is doing his best right now to slowly and very cunningly infiltrate your mind and bring thoughts of fear, unworthiness, uncertainty about your future. The dark enemy specializes in fear. Today's episode is sponsored by AG1, made by Athletic Greens. AG1 has become a morning routine for me and my husband. One delicious scoop of AG1, and we are absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source superfoods, and probiotics. This helps us get our day started off right. With AG1's special blend of ingredients, you will support your gut health, 
your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, recovery, focus, and even aging, all of the things. It doesn't taste healthy, which is what we love about it. We can take it with us when we travel. No more handfuls of vitamins that really make my stomach hurt. AG1 is truly giving us the absorption and support that we need with mental clarity and alertness. And it costs less than $3 a day. With a ton of people taking some kind of multivitamin, it's important to choose one with high quality ingredients that your body will actually absorb. And right now, it's time to reclaim your health and your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop in a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. And to make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free year supply of immune supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com forward slash real girl talk. Again, that's athleticgreens.com forward slash real girl talk to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Fear of not having our needs met, fear of not being accepted, fear of failure, fear fear of not living a healthy life. Maybe you're not feeling well. And this fear that he brings, brings us anxiety, worry, doubt, unbelief, and confusion. And that's where he likes to keep us. But listen to me closely. None of these negative thoughts, none of these negative fears will come into reality unless you first believe them and then you begin to act on them. Fear is a force just like faith is a force. If you give into fear and start to dwell on that junk and you start to act on it, that fear can actually bring things to pass just like faith can bring things to pass. So what are you choosing to focus on? Fear or faith? Job said, the things I greatly feared came upon me. And see, friends, you and I choose every single day what we're going to think about whether it's good or bad. And if we let ourselves, we can all think of thousands of negative things that might happen to us. What if my business goes down? What if I'm never able to start the business that I want? What if I have an accident? What if my kids have to be without me? What if my child gets on drugs? What if my child has an accident? I can't let them drive. What if (laughs) you can, what if yourself to death. Literally, you can worry yourself silly if you want to. I mean, if you just want to let yourself worry all the time, you can do it. You can worry while you shower. You can worry while you sleep. You can worry while you're awake. I choose not to because all that does is bring me more anxiety and more fear in my life. I have to take hold of my thought patterns and I have to reverse them. Some of you may be just sitting here and saying, well, that's just easy for you, but you know, that's just the way I am. My mom and dad were worriers. And so I tend to be a worrier too. You know, there are negative people in the world. I'm just telling you, misery loves company. Maybe you're sitting there thinking, you know what? My whole family are worriers and this is just my DNA. This is just how I am. Some of you are professional worriers. That's just the way God made you. I don't think so. No way, friends. (laughs) With all due respect, that's just a lie from the enemy. Worrying is a choice. And you've got to rise up, rise up right now today in Jesus name and just break that habit and refuse to listen to Satan's lies. And if you've got to refuse to let your mind dwell on that junk on a daily, then that's what you do. Refuse it. The Bible tells us what we should dwell on in Philippians 4, 8. It's to think on things that are pure and honest and of a good report. Hmm. Things that build you up, not tear you down. Think on things that God has done for you. The Bible says, walk with a grateful attitude. In other words, you've got to dwell on the positive and not the negative. We all have positive. We all have negative. It's what we choose to dwell on. It's where we choose to live, where we want our mindset to go. Quit thinking about what you haven't done, what you don't have, and start thinking about what you do have and where you're going in the future. Quit thinking about what's wrong with you and start thinking about what's right with you. Quit thinking about how big your problem is all the time and start dwelling on the fact of how big your God is. 
We've got to learn to live in a grateful attitude. We've got to always focus on the positive and not the negative. If you're continually thinking about the goodness of God, you're not going to have any time to even worry and complain and get down and discouraged. If you're always meditating on God's promises and God's word, remember, pick up the Bible and read it. It gives you all of the answers that you need in your life. So if you're always meditating on God's promises and his word, then you're always going to be filled with a good report. That's what that verse means. The words that come out of your mouth are going to be faith-filled words because what we think in our mind comes out of our mouth. My mom used to say, I tell you all the time, garbage in, garbage out. You're not going to be up one day and one and down two days. No, this has to be something that's consistent. You have to be solid because it's not going to matter what your circumstances do. It only matters what God's word says. In life, situations and circumstances are constantly changing for all of us. In a split second, life can change. And most of the time, it's no control of our own. Look, I'm a walking example. In a split second, my life changed. He is constantly good, though. He's consistently good. So we have to focus on his word. Is it good? What happened to my son? No, it's not. The Bible does not tell us that we're free of troubles and free of issues in our life. No, but it does constantly say that God will help us through those. It will help us through our troubles and our issues and circumstances in life. But thank God the good news is that we serve a God that never changes. He is consistently good. He is there all of the time. He'll never leave us nor forsake us. That's biblical. He's the solid rock in our life. And the promise is his word will never pass away. No, it's not good that my son died, but God never, ever left me for one second. He and he alone made me into who I am and where I am today. But see, Satan is trying to distract our attention away from the things of God. He tries to distract me. I know he's trying to distract you. He wants to keep you so busy trying to figure out how in the world you're ever going to get out of the mess that you've got yourself into, or maybe you didn't get yourself into. He wants to keep you so worried and so bum fuzzled and so confused that you just give up. Believe me, when Bryant died, he tried his best to destroy every ounce of my soul and take over every second of my thought process. If all you do is watch the news 24 hours a day, you're going to have plenty to worry about. I'm just going to tell you right now, I'm not saying don't keep up with the news or don't read the newspaper or, or, or don't follow it on social media, but that can't be something you dwell on on a daily. It's always going to be there when you pick the paper up. It's always going to be there when you turn on the news channel and half of what they're talking about, you can't believe anyway. So why are you subjecting yourself to all of that on a daily basis? Don't do it. You're going to have plenty to worry about on a daily basis. Don't give yourself more things to worry about. All you do is fill your mind with pain and destruction and rising cost of political nightmares in this world. That's all you do when you turn on the news on a daily. It's going to be really easy to get down and discouraged if you just completely bombard yourself with the political chaos and corruption that we have going on. And listen, it was always there. It's just been brought to light now. (laughs) The, The Bible talks about bringing things to light. So All of it is being brought to light so you can tune it in or that is strictly up to you. If all your faith is in a certain business or a certain thing in the stock market and you're constantly thinking about it, then friend, don't be so surprised that your mind gets troubled, filled with fear and anxiety on a daily. But if you choose to keep your mind on the things of God, you're not going to really care about what the economy is saying to you. You're not going to really care about what the stock market does because you're going to be dwelling on the fact that God said in Philippians 4.19, he is going to supply all of our needs according to his riches in the glory by Christ Jesus. That's Philippians 4.19. You may say it again. He is going to supply all of your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Jesus. So it doesn't really matter what man does or what the economy does. God can still rain down bread from heaven and take care of us, just like he did the children of Israel. God has not lost the recipe for manna. (laughs) When Peter needed money to pay his taxes, Jesus said, no big Peter, just go down to the lake and go fishing. Can you imagine you thinking in your mind, I really need money to pay my taxes. And you get a thought from God that says, we'll just go down to the lake and go fishing. 
<laughs> sure enough, the first fish he caught, he had enough money to pay both his and the Lord's taxes. God can take care of you. He will bring situations. He will bring people in your life that you didn't even expect to take care of the very problem that you have right now. You just have to believe it. You have to have the faith and not the fear. You have to change your mindset. He has not gotten weak, my friends. He's the same God. God has not become tired and old and grumpy. No, he's the same and extremely willing to meet every need that you have. God takes pleasure in the prosperity of his children. And it's time for us to quit thinking so small and let's start dwelling on what awesome God we serve. He is the all powerful creator of this universe that you live in. Yes, I hear some people say, you know, I'm just looking to the universe to help me. Why? God created the universe. I'm looking for God. He's more powerful than that. He created the universe. I don't need the universe to help me. I need God. And so do you. He spoke the words into existence. Don't you think that he can take care of you and he can take care of me? See, when he said, let there be light, light came at a thousand miles per second. So don't you think that he can get your child off drugs? Don't you think that he can heal your marriage? Don't you think that he can save your loved one? Certainly he can. Don't you think that he can restore you and your hurts and your pains? You've got to quit dwelling on the impossible and how hopeless your situation is and start dwelling on the goodness of God and the promises of God. I really hope this has helped you today. And I'm going to tell you, there's a two part to this. There's a two part to this episode, and this is just part one of this episode, because this is going to be a series on guiding your mind and controlling your thoughts. We're going to talk a lot about controlling our thoughts and how to do that in next week's episode of part two on guarding your heart and controlling your mind. So if this has blessed you in any way, please pass this on to a friend, family member, coworker, You can also take a screenshot and put it in your stories on Facebook or Instagram, because the whole idea is to share love and and, and inspiration and God's word with everyone. It's not to keep it for ourselves. It's to share it and help other people. So help spread the love. And I'm also going to talk about something that I call the three R's in life in next week's part two episode of guiding your mind and controlling your thoughts. I hope you have a blessed, blessed day. Thank you for tuning in all the way through Real Girl Talk Show. Make sure you subscribe anywhere you listen to podcasts. And if you happen to have iTunes, would you do me a favor and leave me a review on the show? I know you're going to leave me a five star, right? That's the way that I can reach more and more people around the world. Remember, whatever you wish to receive, you have to first give. And I know that you're the kind of person that wants to reach people all over the world and inspire them. You can copy this link and share it with your family and friends. Share it on social media. Remember, people need to be uplifted and inspired more than ever today. Thank you so much for being a part of Real Girl Talk community. And until next time, go after your dreams, create your vision, and truly be the person God intended you to be healthy, happy, whole, and full of life. Love you.